Hello there, all you boys and girlies. Well, first movie review vlog of the new year. And I might as well do it for, for a popular one. So, this time around it is Aquaman. The Aquaman movie, which is currently lighting up the box office charts. Apparently it's like... It's about to pass one billion, I think I, I saw some, it was about, you know, or a billion or whatever, somewhere, something about a billion. Which is a big deal, apparently. I probably should have actually checked out that article or whatever instead of just, like, noting the headline. Eh, billion! Anyway, moving on to actual Aquaman stuff. Aquaman, as most of you probably know, is from Atlantis, the, you know, city under the sea, which, you know, it's still around and its inhabitants are there and they can, they can breathe water and so on and so forth, so they're the undersea civilization and it's like, you know, the ocean is ours, we claim the ocean and it's our kingdom. So, um, in this movie, it kind of, of course, he's already been set up in, in, in Justice League, so they don't spend too much time going into all that sort of thing, it just kind of leaps into it. Um, but Aquaman is the son uh, in, in, in this version. He has, you know, a bunch of, he has several different origins. In this version, um, he is uh, the son of the Atlantean Queen and a, a human lighthouse keeper. So he grew up on land with his dad, and he always knew about his, his heritage, but he was always kind of bitter about it because it's like, you know, my mom was exiled by, by you guys, so, you know, why should I care about Atlantis? I'm just, I'm just gonna go off and do my own thing. But, as this movie begins, um, his mother was exiled from Atlantis and had him with the light, the lighthouse keeper. Then she went back to Atlantis and uh, had a son by the the king who he, he was actually supposed to marry, who was not a nice guy, which is why she fled. Anyway, so the this other son of hers is um, Arthur. The, the Aquaman's real name is Arthur. Arthur Curry. This other son is. Arthur's half-brother, and his name is Orm, and he is the King of Atlantis, and he's kind of mad at the surface world because uh, of a variety of, of reasons, but it's kind of... It's kind of implied that he's just, he's ma he is mainly just kind of a bit power-mad and wants to and wants to rule the world, but but it, it's also, he does, he's mad at, at, at humanity for, like, you know, dumping a bunch of bad stuff in the oceans, and, and just kind of, you know, all the stuff that humanity does do, um, which people in the, the oceans might not like, because, you know, there's always, you know, dropping, dropping torpedoes on us, and... Uh, so he's like he um is all set to start a war with the surface which you know and the atlanteans have a lot of power on their side this would like this could destroy the world and um mera who is uh, an atlantean princess there's, there's, there's the various different sort of Atlantean factions, and she's the princess of one of them. Goes to Arthur, who is already, you know, doing his Aquaman thing, and she's like, Please, you know, you've got, you you have a legitimate claim, claim to the throne. The only person who can stop this war is you. And at first, you know, he's like, oh, I don't really want to do it. But he, he gets dragged into it because he does realize this is going to be really bad if it happens. And so he has to go on like a quest to prove his name and there's a whole thing with a with a uh, powerful At Atlantean artifact and I, I won't go into that. And meanwhile there's also uh, the 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 origin of the Black Manta, who is, you know, one of one of Aquaman's all-time deadliest foes, and who I'll, I'll get into a bit more when we talk about the, about the characters, but, um, 
so that's the the basics of you know what the, is what I think of it. Well, first off, I I've I was really kind of excited for this movie because um, I wasn't wild about about uh, you know Justice League films film. I wasn't wild about the Justice League film, but um, probably the best thing about it, aside from uh, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, who we already knew from, you know, well, Wonder Woman movies, she would be good, um, was uh, Jason Momoa as Aquaman. He was kind of a, he was f having fun, you know, he was kind of like a bad boy kind of, kind of guy who didn't really give a man anything and he's like you know yeah whatever I'll, I'll you know I'll save the world you know whatever just let me you know give me a fifth of vodka and I'm just kind of, he's just kind of like a, the, 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 the bad boy sort of you know um and he was having fun and so I was kind of like oh it's some song and they're talking about making an Aquaman film like that could be kind of interesting um so I was looking forward to this, and it it didn't disappoint. It didn't disappoint. This movie was is an action is quite a lot of fun. I guess before going uh, too much into into the, you know, I'll, I'll just briefly go over the characters I have written down here. Because of course it's still still Jason Momoa as as Aquaman, and he's he's as good as usual. He's still kind of, he's, he's kind of a, I mean, like I said, he's kind of like a, a bit of a bad boy, bit of a meathead in the, in the Justice League, um, movie, and he still is here, but it does, the movie does a good job of, of setting up a kind of like why he has such an attitude and, um, and emphasizing that there is more to him than that. It's just, uh, you know, he, he's kind of... He has a good reason to, to, to have an attitude about these things. He's, he's kind of lived one of those kind of on the edge, not really having much of a specific place to call home sort of live, lives. And, you know, so it's like... You can understand why he he kind of wound up being this sort of a bad boy wanderer, sort of, but he has like a core of nobility inside him, and it kind of it does a, it does a good job of of showing that it's like it's kind of deeply hidden sometimes, but there's a reason why you know he is the true king, and it's not just because he's the son of of the of the queen. You know, he he has. He has a genuinely good streak in him, and he he is a hero at heart. So it's it's kind of it's 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 a good you know he, he's he's can count sometimes kind of fade into the background a little bit, but he he's always uh, you you can tell why he's the hero. You know? um, and there's a uh, Jember <laughs> Jember. <laughs> What was that? Amber Heard. Amber Heard as Mera, who, um, was pretty good. In the, the comics, you know, she is, has been Aquaman's wife for a long time, and there was a whole thing, you know, where she, she was like the, the princess of, of, uh, no, she, she was like the queen of an Atlantis in another dimension, and, uh, yeah, which wasn't the case here, like I said. So this is kind of a reinterpretation, but that's fine. I mean, you know, that that whole thing was a little weird to begin with, and it's it's like it it's, it makes sense in the comics because there's always a million weird different things going on in the comics. But in the the movie, it's like, why are you doing this? It's it's too complicated, so they didn't do it. It's fine. As for her actual character, she's pretty cool. Um, she's kind of like this sort of no-nonsense sort of sort of type who doesn't who doesn't put up with sort of Aquaman's 
guff. You know, he's kind of like, you know, well, Atlantis kind of, you know, Atlantis sucks because it, you know, it, it, you know, my mom and it, 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 well, yeah, you never even give it a chance, you know, and of course she, she has to like, you know, well, I've never actually given the surface world a chance and she kind of learns like, yeah, okay, you know, it is. The, 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 you know, surface worlders aren't always all bad either, you know, and it's kind of, so it's kind of, they, they both have a bit of a, a bit of a personal journey to go on, but, yeah, she's cool, she, she makes it for a good sort of a, a love interest and straight man, for lack of a better term, and, uh, she has the, the water powers, which, and I think it's, if I remember correctly, uh, like, her sort of particular, the, the Atlantis is, is divided into various different sort of tribes and, or not tribes, but like, various different kingdoms, and, uh, her, her particular kingdom, I think, I, th I think they all have the sort of, sort of controlling water thing. I think think that, that 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 was a little a little ambiguous but it was like in in the scenes it seemed in all the sort of the, the big sort of action scenes it seemed like she was the only one doing it it was kind of like her thing so it was like yeah that's 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 her family's or her kingdom's deal that they have this power anyway she was cool um uh, I might as well, as long as I'm talking about her, I might as well mention, um, her, her father, um, was, uh, King Nereus, uh, who was played by Dolph Lundgren, which was kind of cool. He didn't, he didn't actually do much. He was, he's kind of a, he's kind of a, a, a bit of a background character, but it's, I'm mean, glad Dolph Lundgren is still, still, you know getting work, still doing stuff. I like, I mean, I know, I know he doesn't have a, a great reputation as like, you know, I think most people know him best as like the Punisher from that old, from the old 80s movie and this kind of, oh, you know, that was, that wasn't a great movie. I liked that movie, you know? Dolph Lundgren was awesome as the Punisher. The only thing you people have against him is that he didn't wear the skull on his shirt. You know, get over it. Anyway. Dolph Lundgren. And next on the, the actors I like thing, you had uh, Willem Dafoe as Volko, one of the um, uh, King's advisor types who who is you know, working with Aquaman. Um, and Willem Dafoe is awesome. He he can he can do no wrong. I love Willem Dafoe, um, and he does a, a good job. As usual, he does a good job, uh, kind of being the sort of the voice. He, he's the you know he's the voice of reason. And he's trying to, he's he's trying to you know make he's trying to kind of slow down Orm and kind of like. Well, I mean, now you're going, you're going to attack the surface, yeah. But could we uh, try and, and do this and this and this first? You know that sort of that sort of thing, and uh, I'm. I'm not doing a good job describing it, perhaps, but Willem Dafoe, yeah, it's not like his most flamboyant role or anything, but he's, yeah. Next, uh, I, I guess, just kind of completing the sort of the good guy, the good guy roles. Uh, Nicole Kidman as as Aquaman's mom. Uh, that was a nice surprise. <laughs> it's like, you know, whoa! I didn't know Nicole Kidman was in this. Um, she, and, and, you know, again, not the world's most demanding or significant role, but she does a good job in it, and she, she gets to be, like, the, the, sort of, the caring mother and the regal queen, and, um, she gets some nice, uh, one of the, the subplots of the, the movie is her, um, literal fish-out-of-water romance with, uh, the Aquaman's dad, the lighthouse keeper. And, um, that's a nice element. And it's, that, that whole thing is a nice element. It's nice that, you know, Aquaman still, like, knows his dad and keeps in touch and, and, you know, 
goes off and, you know, hangs out with him whenever he gets the chance. And his dad has never forgotten his mom, and he's still, you know, kind. He's still kind of, oh, I'll wait for you to come back, my love. And, 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 uh, you know, Nicole Kidman does a good job as him being like, yeah, she, she's someone who you'd wait for. Um, otherwise, like I said, not super, not super, uh, not the, the, the most, comp, you know, complex role in the world. And she's not in the movie for a whole lot, but she, she does affect a, a fair amount of things her character does. And she did, yeah, Nicole Kidman, awesome. Which brings us to the villains. Um... Patrick Wilson, who is a, it's a familiar name as an actor. I'm not sure what else he's he's been in that I've seen, if if, if anything. Uh, but yeah, he plays Orm. He plays uh, in, in the comics. You know, he's the Ocean Master, who is one of who is one of uh, you know Aquaman's major foes, and he has a variety of different. Origins, but yeah, it's normally it's just they're they're, they're the half brother thing. And in this case, the Ocean Master is like the role he aspires to, because it's like uh, when the various different, all the various different Atlant Atlantean sort of sub kingdoms are united under his rule, he that will become his official uh, title. He will be Ocean Master, um, and he. Uh, not the world's most com again, not the world's most complex uh, villain role. Uh, he's kind of just kind of like a power hungry sort of sort of guy. But there there's some complexities there. He does one of the interesting things is that he uh, he has some genuine sort of familial. It's like you know he hates sort of Aquaman, but he's like you know I hate you. I don't want you involved with this. But I don't actually want to kill you. I'll give you a chance. You know, of course, Aquaman doesn't take it. And but it's like you know, one of the reasons he hates him is like, you're the reason my you're the reason our mom got killed. You know, it's kind of there's this, some bitterness there, but it's it's based in like a family sort of thing. But you know, ultimately, yeah, he's the he's the evil military guy who wants to take over the <laughs> um. But you know he's he he does a good job, um, being the, doing the you know bad guy stuff. Person I actually thought was was he he was a secondary character, but I mentioned before is is Black Manta, um, played by oh I'm um uh, I hope I'm not mis mispronouncing this because it. It's one of those names that I, you know, don't know precisely how to pronounce. You might make a fool of yourself. Uh, Yaya Abdul Mateen the second. I think it's Yaya. I mean, how else? Do you, it's y a h y a. Yaya. Right? I mean, how? I don't know. I'll just call him Abdul Mateen. You know, Abdul Mateen. He's actually. They did a really good job of uh, reinterpreting Black Manta for 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 the DCEU. Um, it's in the comics, you know. There's kind of the he was around for a while, and then there was the kind of a. Uh, this was during like sort of I think the seventies, like sort of the aftermath of the civil rights era, and you know he's kind of he was a black man, and he was like sort of a. He, he was kind of like a black separatist guy who wanted to take over. Over Atlantis, so that you know the black man doesn't have it good in America. We're going to go down under, you know, down to Atlantis and live our, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and now this this sounds at all familiar. Yeah, that that that's kind of that was kind of Killmonger's deal in Black Panther. So it's like they wisely didn't go that way. And anyway, that was always kind of. It, very unsubtle sort of sort of way of going about it, and that's it's mainly it's largely been jettisoned now anyway. So they didn't do that. They they but they did. They kept like the whole race angle in there in a clever way, which I won't I won't 
give away, but he, he in this case, you know, he's like he's like a submarine pirate, and it's like he comes from a long line of submarine pirates, and Aquaman uh, g gains his enmity in a uh, well. I mean, let's just say you can kind of you can see both sides, but you can definitely see why he really hates Aquaman, and that that. He, he does a good job. He's like, you know, this guy hates Aquaman. He like, he's um, uh, he's kind of like Orm's. It turns out, you know, he's kind of like Orm's human agent, helping to sort of stir the pot and and you know for the war to come. But it's kind of like, you know, all he wants is revenge. He wants revenge on Aquaman. He wants to kill Aquaman. So he becomes Black Manta. And unfortunately, the, the you know, thing is he's not actually in the movie for all that long because it's, you know, it's it's the, the, the main plot is Orm's plot, of course. So, uh, so there's not a whole lot of room in it for for Black Manta, but he is set up for the for like a, a you know uh, a next installment sort of thing, and I hope they they do get like a good sequel where he's he's like the main villain because he he was so you know the 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 Abdul Mateen he was intense he was like you know you could feel the rage spilling off this guy he has he has like a sort of a whole sort of uh, iron man sort of sort of tony stark moment where it's like he's kind of you know creating his gear and he's like real into it and you know this is the thing that will kill aquaman and it's like oh you know i i i this this guy's this guy's no joke and uh let's see Oh yeah, this is this is not like in the main cast, but but this is something I found out while I was doing research, and I, I had to share it. Julie Andrews is in this movie, doing a voice. She uses a voice of like a great big scary monster. You would never recognize it as as hers, but she's you know she's amazing. She just like I mean you know, you know what Julie Andrews sounds like right you can picture her voice she she's got one of the old time sort of recognizable voice you know, she was freaking Mary Poppins and she does the monster voice and she she's unrecognizable it's it, in retrospect it's like I want to watch the movie again and and that sort of, the sort of sequence with her in it and I was like whoa you know. Julie Andrews! Yeah! <laughs> um, okay, so the, the, that's that's the character stuff. In, in case it, it ha wasn't clear, I, I really dug this movie. Um, I've like, I've been a... a I won't, I'm not, not a big fan of Aquaman, because I haven't read a whole lot of his actual stuff. But I've, I, you know, I'm sort I've read sort of some of the stuff with him in it, and I'm, and, you know, I thought he was cool, uh, in, like, the, the Justice League, uh, the, the, the JLA comics, um, which is largely where I know him from, but, um, but it's like, he's one of those characters that whenever I encounter, I find myself appreciating a little bit more, and, um, so I'm really glad that he's, he's, not only gotten a movie, but like a good movie that everybody seems to like. Cause it is, it's really, it's really good, and they, they really, they, they. There's a whole aesthetic of this whole underwater world, which is really pretty interesting. It's like they've got a whole, all the like sort of the architecture and technology is based around like fish and you know all these these great big. Uh, you know, statues of like, you know, gods with with tridents and helmets and like, you know, mm, you know we are the gardens of Atlantis. And, you know, and they've got like, there's a scene where there's like these two, uh, not armies, but like groups of soldiers 
facing each other, and one of them is riding on giant seahorses, and the other one is riding on sharks. And it's like, oh, this is awesome. This is the sort of thing that, you know, that it, 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 it makes no sense, but it works perfectly in this sort of world. Um, and, you know, it's a nice nod to, like, uh... You know, Aquaman. There's like a, the, the the Aquaman cartoon back in the, the, I, think the I think the 60s, where you know he he would ride around on a seahorse, um, and at one point, you know, he does ride around on a seahorse, um, and it's cool, um, and it's also emphasized that you know. He was saying, because Aquaman, you know, he he's one of those characters that that people, you know, kind of love to rag on. It's like, you know, oh, Aquaman, he's a joke, you know. He just talks to fish. He's no use anywhere else. No. If you're an Atlantean, it, um, you are a tough character in this version of of things. You are a really tough character because you're, you know, you are strong enough and tough enough to withstand, you know, the, these these crushing ocean temperatures. And this means that you can more or less shrug off a bullet like Superman and cause dents in an iron door. You know, it's like... That he, you know, most of his, or a fair amount of his big sort of fight scenes are on land. And it's actually, it's said, you know, he's more formidable, actually more formidable on land than in the water. Because in the water, you know, he, he has to, he's, you know, he has to withstand the water, so he's he's kind of, he's more or less just an ordinary person. It's, you know, but out, out of the water, you know, he's all of a sudden, you know, he, he doesn't have to withstand the crushing ocean depths. He's just the guy who can withstand the crushing ocean depths, which means he's a... Yeah! You know? Um, so, yeah, he's he's awesome. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, yes. I heard um, that some people are kind of complaining that Aquaman didn't... The, the 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 movie didn't, didn't go very far with like the environmental issue because like there's the whole thing with yeah the Orm is using his excuse to attack the surface world because you know they've been been dumping trash and I don't really think it I mean it it this is meant it's mentioned several times and it's like yeah it's it's great that this is sort of uh it's great that this this is an important sort of an issue, and it's nice to see it addressed. But it's it doesn't need to be rammed down our throats. This isn't like a you know, this isn't an environmental movie. This is a this is a superhero action fantasy thing, um, and it's like the fact that it's that it's a concern at all and is addressed as a problem at all that. That's fine. You know, we, we don't need a whole song and dance about it. It, it works fine. Um, so, yeah. Um, final thoughts. Uh, like I said, I like this movie. Um, uh, honestly, you know, this is, and in retrospect, this is making me look a little more kindly on, like, the Justice League film. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, I still don't think that's a great movie, but if you look at kind of the current sort of <clears throat> DCEU model for this sort of thing, it's like, it seems like, you know, you get a big bad film, and then you get a pretty, some, pretty decent spin-off from it. Um, like, you know, in, uh, you know, Batman, Batman v Superman was a hot dumpster fire, but then after, in, in, immediately after it, you got Wonder Woman. And then you got Justice League, which was not a dumpster fire, but highly disappointing. And now you got Aquaman. Um, and it's like, well, okay, I mean, if, 
I would still rather have like a good movie and then a good movie, but if if the thing is going to be a, a bad movie and then a good spin-off from it, I can live with that. And honestly, I'd say, you know, Wonder Woman got a lot of a lot of good press when it came out, and deservedly so. But I'd say this this one is better than than Wonder Woman. This is kind of like the Wonder the movie that Wonder Woman wished it could be. Sort of. I mean, it's like, as I've said before, Wonder Woman was like two-thirds of a really good movie, and then it kind of all fell apart at the end with like a big sort of a special effect blah, sort of thing. And it almost does that here. I mean, it comes awfully close to doing it, but A, it's one that makes sense in, like, the story. I mean, it's all leading up to a big sort of action climax. And yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit much. I mean, it's all under the sea, and there's, you know, a whole bunch of, of Atlanteans and sea creatures and Aquaman. It's a bit, it's a bit overwhelming, but a, that's only, you know, that's only kind of, it's not actually the actually actual climax. The actual climax is a bit more, uh, a bit, you know, easier to take in. And see, it's like, it's not, um, it doesn't ruin the movie. It just kind of, uh, well, you know, this could have been done a bit clearer, but it's still, it's done in a way that makes sense and... And, yeah. So, it's still not perfect. And I kind of wish that, that you know, Warner Brothers would rethink their model for these films. But it was done better than with Wonder Woman. Um, and, yeah, I like both movies. But this one overall works better, I think. Um, so, uh... Yeah, I guess I've said all I have to say. Um, Aquaman, you know, good movie, some respect, you know, long past due to a character who deserves it, and I'm glad he's finally getting it. It's a good film. It's not a perfect film, but it's a good one. I look forward to sort of the follow-ups there may be. I want to see more of Black Manta. And, <clears throat> yeah, uh... I guess that does it. Um, stay tuned for future future videos. Um, I guess you know I should say like, comment, and subscribe. I suppose I guess you're supposed to say that. Um, and yeah. Um, see you later.